All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we have my E46 up on the lift. We're gonna do some Condor Speed Shop reinforcements and bushings for it today. We got all the bushings from Condor Speed Shop. We are an actual dealer for Condor, so if you're looking for some bushings, check out the link down in the description, and we'll get you hooked up for sure. Got the E46 already up on the lift. This is my drift car, and E46s have a problem with the rear end subframes pulling out of the chassis, so we wanna eliminate that. We're gonna weld in some reinforcements today along with doing the whole rear end bushing. So the subframe, rear trailing arm, diff bushings. Luckily, I don't think we've had any issues with tearing out. She looks pretty good so far underneath the car. We're gonna go ahead and start removing the tires. The brake calipers will have to come off. There's a dual caliper on this side, so we're gonna have to remove both calipers. We're gonna have to take off the BCs as well because we're taking the whole subframe out. So we might either leave the diff in or take it out all in one piece. Exhaust has got to come down, of course. E-brake cable has to be uh, pulled through as well. And then that's about it. All right, we got the brakes already dangling. All the ABS and speed sensors already disconnected. Gonna do the trailing arm, uh, three bolts going up into the chassis. Working on the uh, drive shaft right now. Got a few of them loose and then took off the heat shield just to get a little more visibility. And notice the uh, center support bearing it's absolutely shot. So that's something we're probably going to replace while we're in here. Definitely good to know. So I'm still taking apart the E46 rear end and I think I'm going to do a little change of plans and actually take the arms off piece by piece. We're going to go to remove the axles with all these little Torx bolts here. We're actually going to take the diff out before moving everything. Mainly because everything gets really, really heavy and it's really hard to kind of manage it. Even with a couple guys, it's a little bit difficult. Might as well make it easier on us. Take everything out now. So I'm gonna try to get these arms out, diff out, axles, this top control arm, and then this whole hub assembly will stay together with the arm and the training arm. And that way, we get all this out of the way, and then the subframe will come out nice and easy. All right, just got the subframe out. I don't really have too many tips. It's pretty straightforward. Shout out to Tress for all the help. Very lovely. So here she is. I wanna inspect the chassis. So most of the time, or not most of the time, I should say, but sometimes they crack. Your chassis will get little cracks around here. First impressions, mine looks pretty good. Uh, there's just a little wear spot from the bushing. Um, nothing too major. So the spots you wanna look at are right here along this stud, this stud, this mounting point, and obviously the other side as well. And then we're also gonna reinforce this little uh, cross member brace. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these studs out. You can see there's a hex here that we can put a wrench on it. Take these out, and we're gonna start grinding these down so that way we can weld to it. So all this undercoating's gotta come off. We're gonna probably grind a good little bit. I'll show you once that's done. Here's the subframe. This is when it gets kind of tricky. We're gonna have to get these old bushings out. There's not a great way to do it. A lot of people kind of burn them out. I kind of do a burn, kind of do a sawzall. So once we get this knocked out or cut out or burned out, we'll take a sawzall blade and kind of cut out the metal ring that's around it. So that way we can go and put the condor ones in. Condor's got some great bushings, like I said. Definitely would definitely recommend these. All right, we got the uh, reinforcement plates already just chilling. We went ahead and kind of mock, mocked them up and then outlined them with a Sharpie. So now we're gonna take them all the way down and then grind down the undercoating, these ones here. And we're gonna do the little guys, we're gonna grind all this down so it's nice and smooth to bare metal. And then these, we actually bent part of it where it's perforated to kind of concave to the chassis. And then this one has another bend on the top. So now we're gonna go and take them all down, get to grinding, and then get to welding. Already got everything welded up really quickly. Don't look at the welds too close. I'm not a welder, I just have one. But uh, here's what it came out to look like and we're gonna go and remove the bolts. But she is all looking good, ready to rock and roll. Uh, we might grind these down a little bit because some of them need to be flat so that way the bushing can sit flush with the chassis. Uh, like the, uh, the big ones mainly need to sit flat. So we might grind them flat in case a little bit of weld sticking out. We wanna smoothen them up a little bit. Other than that, Pretty simple little process. We're gonna go ahead and grind it down and we're gonna go ahead and paint it with some bed liner so that way it doesn't rust because you don't want it to rust. Cool it off and be safe about things. 
All right, it is a couple days later. We figured out something that we will not actually have to burn these bushings out of the subframe. So I've seen this once before and what I went ahead and did, I already got one of them out. So I took my drill bit and kind of a small drill and I drilled around the silver bushing. So I did a bunch of holes around it and then kind of worked it out. And so I was able to punch out, I was able to punch out just the little center part. So it was a small little center metal piece. And so once that's out, I took my Sawzall blade and was actually able to cut uh, toward the outside. I did a bit of a cut and then I was able to bend it in a little bit so that way it was a little bit smaller and I could hammer it out. A little bit of PB Blaster definitely helps. So got all these done, gonna start on the rest. All right, you're gonna start on this next one. Like I said, taking the drill. And it goes through it really easily. Like that was one hole, gonna move over a little bit. Drill another one another one and I'm going to work my way around it and by the time I'm all the way back around there's pretty much no more rubber holding it in. Ah! Oh. There she is. Easy as that. So that only took two three minutes. So that's a lot faster than burning. Now Sawzall blade. I'm going to stick it in here and trim outward. But don't go too far. I don't want to hit the subframe. You definitely don't want to cut that. Huh. Oh, there it is. Don't need a torch. Don't need freaking fire department to come around. Yeah. Couple drills, couple slices. Freaking pinch that thing in right there. PB blaster comes right out. I already got all the bushings out, cleaned her up, she's looking good. So now time to install the condor bushings. Um, I'll go ahead and leave a link so you can check out the uh, instructions, but essentially the ones with the smaller holes go into the front too, and the ones with the larger holes will go into the back. They do separate, which is really nice. We've had these in the refrigerator for a couple days. Uh, you can put them in the freezer so that way they can contract and tap them a little bit e easier. Uh, something to note is that we're gonna go ahead and install the cutout on the top. So that way the stud will actually sit in that little hole. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's where the stud fits. That's only in the front two and uh, make sure that's up. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and take a dead blow hammer, give her a little bit of a tap and they should go right in. Just like that. Pretty easy. I think the refrigerator definitely helped these shrink up a little bit. And then once we get that bolt in there and the nut, that little silver piece will sit where it needs to. Looks good. That's it. So the diff, you can kind of tell there's a lip on it, or pretty common sense to put it in. Wait, is that the right way? Yeah, it is the right way. Well guys, it has been a few days. This has been such a process. Ended up getting sent the wrong uh, diff bushings, but it's all right. We got it all situated out. Only took like 30 seconds to knock the new ones in. We're gonna finish the E46 up tonight. Sorry, I'm a little bit congested today. Like I said, this has been many, many, many weeks. Where we're at, all the diff bushings are in the subframe. She's looking good, we're gonna wipe it down. And actually gonna get it back up in the car tonight. Something I discovered was that you actually don't need to weld these little reinforcements in. Condor recommends that you just glue them in, I guess, to stay in place. Whatever, I welded them. I don't think it's the end of the world. I'm gonna grind these down a little bit more so they're a little bit more flush. Other than that, the bed liner came out really, really nicely. And it keeps it from rusting. Make sure to hit it from every single different angle so that way you get it all covered and you won't have any rust issues down the road. I am gonna actually change my brakes while everything's out of the car, so I'll have fresh pads and rotors all the way around. And I think that's about it. It's a good time to change your diff fluid if you like doing so. Other than that, we're gonna get to work. I'll check back in. Alrighty guys, day like 10 of the E46 rear end uh, reinforcement and bushings. We're gonna add a little mod to the list. We're actually gonna go ahead and install the, the Condor Speed Shop stainless steel brake lines. These are a great little upgrade to your braking system of your E46. We got the current stock little uh, rubber lines and these get dry rotted after so many years of use. So the Condor one's definitely a good upgrade. Pretty simple, we're just gonna go ahead and unscrew this fitting uh, along the caliper and then work our way up and unscrew the other one back up in here. I believe it comes apart in two pieces and we're gonna replace it with this lovely little condor set.
Alrighty, time to do the front brake lines really quickly. Not a very hard process, pretty much like the rears. We're just gonna go ahead and undo that little 11 millimeter right up on the top if you have brake line fitting wrenches. That'll work too, so it's gonna undo this top line and it connects all the way down and around. Already got the caliper off and just hanging and we just gotta pop it out of this little bracket right there. Unscrew it from the caliper and replace it with the brilliant and beautiful Condor Speed Shop front stainless steel brake lines, link in the description. So this is a good reason of why you want to change out your old rubber brake lines that are 20 plus years old. They just get old and brittle and start cracking like that. These new stainless steel condor lines will not do that. They're going to give you a lot better pedal feel and longevity of your brake lines. Well, the E46 is not done yet. We also need to replace the transmission mounts because they're torn. This is actually very, very common on E36s and E46s. These transmission mounts, they're rubber, they're super old. They end up tearing, so that way you can literally wiggle the transmission by hand. And even sometimes the shifter up top will be off. So that's really sketchy. Got the nice condors in, so we're going to go ahead and use my little transmission jack. We're going to get it up in the air and uh, unbolt these, of course. I think they're like 12 or 13s and then place the jack on this little point here. You can also do this on the ground with a floor jack. You don't want to jack it up too much because there's a lot of components around. But we're going to jack it up, unbolt it, take out the old rubber mounts, put the new ones in. Also, let me update you guys where we're at with the reassembly of the entire car. So this has been a big process. Rear end's completely back in. She's looking great, ready to rock and roll. New brake lines, new uh, reinforcements, the whole shebang. She is looking good. Shout out to Condor yet again. And even the fronts, we did the front lollipop bushings. It's gonna be another video for Andy's E46. We have two sets. We installed the offset lollipop bushings on the control arms to give us a little bit more caster for drifting. So a little bit better alignment. Well guys, there you have it. It's super late. We got the E46 wrapped up. It took several days to get this job done. Uh, I'll go ahead and leave a list of stuff in the description of what we used. Again, huge thanks to Condor for sending out a lot of these parts for the E46. We're gonna be drifting that car here in a couple of weeks. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Video helped you, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. Helps a lot more people find the video and the channel. Thanks for watching guys. Catch you guys. That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? Hey, coming down like precipitation.